we're going to hear a dynamic mother-daughter duo who literally just got off a plane from India, literally. So you'll see that they are, they're hinted up, they look beautiful and tired and vivacious and excited. And I'll introduce them in just a minute. And then we'll be really proud to have one of our partners on stage, Baby Center, and Linda Murray, so we're very excited about that. And then we have a very special guest coming uh, that's not in the program, and I think you all will be quite moved uh, about what two gentlemen have to say to all us moms. So without further ado, please let me introduce Sophie Blackall and Olive Godley. They are both champions for the Shot at Life campaign and travel the world advocating for measles, rubella vaccinations. It's so lovely to be here, such uh, a privilege and a treat, and uh, there's some slight responsibility to be dynamic, but we will do our very best. Um, I'm not sure if you just saw that little glimpse of the subway poster that I put up there, but no, see, it went by, so there it is. Um, some of you may have seen that, and that's only a portion of it, because it's meant to scroll. I'm very bad at technology, but this is nothing to do with me. Um, it's, oh, it's <laughs> I'm going to stop looking over that way. Some of you may have seen that subway poster, which was up in, in the New York City trains all of last year, which is how I came to be here today talking about measles. Um, the Measles and Rubella Initiative uh, invited me to come to the Congo, uh, the DRC, last year to uh, visit some measles-affected communities, basically because they had seen this poster and thought that uh, I might be able to make some drawings based on my experiences there, which was a phenomenal, phenomenal um, time. It was an opportunity to, to see things that I had never seen before. Uh, measles, to me, was a childhood disease um, which put me out for, you know, maybe a day. I think I got jello. It seemed fine. Um, this was in Australia. Uh, so when I first heard about measles, I just, I, I, I had no idea, really, that it is uh, such a ferocious disease still that it kills 430 children every day. One third of those children are in India. Uh, the population of India is, is ridiculous, uh, 1.2 billion. Um, there are so many children born, it's almost a child a second, if you can think about that. Since I've been talking, oh, dozens of them um, have been born. Uh, and, and the potential for them to die from measles is, is, is vast. And yet, there's a, a vaccination which is available. It's efficient, it's uh, inexpensive, and it's safe. It costs uh, under a dollar to vaccinate a child. So we just went to, uh, to Uttar Pradesh, um, the most populated region of India. Uh, as uh, it was mentioned earlier, we just got back, so we're a little topsy-turvy. Um, it was a, a, just a, a mind-blowing experience, yeah, it was wasn't incredible. it? Uh, we had never been to India before, so... And always wanted to go always wanted to go, um, and landing from New York in, in Varanasi, which is where the Ganges is, um, it was just mind-blowing. So Culture we have a little, seriously. here's the Ganges. Um, are you going to play the film now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We are in India, in the city of Varanasi, where the sun rises around 5.30 over the Ganges River. This is really early for us, but by this time health workers have been up for hours. Here they are arriving at the hospital to prepare everything they need for the day's measles catch-up campaign. This is a vaccine carrier. It's incredibly hot here and there's very little electricity. Today is 105 degrees. Each carrier has to have four ice packs to keep the vaccine cold. The carrier holds 20 vials and each vial can vaccinate five kids. This campaign hopes to reach 134 million children across India. 630,000 of those are here in Varanasi. The health workers load the vaccine carriers and themselves into auto rickshaws and disperse to different communities. This is happening simultaneously all across this vast area. The 
Community mobilizers work hard in the days and weeks before the campaign to make sure parents know when and where to bring their kids. They tell them how important it is to vaccinate against measles and how two doses can protect a child for life. The workers color the children's pinkies purple pen, so it's easy to tell who's been vaccinated. The sheer number of children in India is absolutely staggering. We met just a tiny bunch of them, but we couldn't help feeling that every child we saw vaccinated would have a better chance at life. A chance children everywhere deserve. It was just incredible to see the campaign in person, but you don't have to travel to India to make a difference in a child's life. Measles vaccinations cost only one dollar a child. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm going to try and get on to the images, but maybe you can do that for me. I don't know how we get past this. I'll just stop holding things. There we go. Um, and we can, we can go beyond this because we've seen the Ganges and here are the health workers in their rickshaws. Um, Olive met a bunch of them. They were amazing, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they were great. Um, they were not much older than me, which was a little terrifying. I'm 16 and you know, some of them were 17, 18, um, especially the school teachers as well, who were all about my age, which was kind of scary because, you know, I was just complaining about how I have to go back to school after this and, you know, it's lucky that they get to go to school or they're teaching school. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, it, it was quite a striking experience not to talk for you, but to be <laughs> a, a girl in India as well yeah. and, and to just see those uh, disparities. Um, uh, so we visited several um, immunization sites. Some of them were in really, really challenging situations like this doorway. Uh, it was... Uh, it was in a doorway. Um, it was 105 to 108 degrees. Uh, the, everything is just on such a vast scale. As I said, the number of children in this particular region, there were 630,000 they were trying to immunize. Uh, across India, it's 134 million. Um, just the paperwork involved, which is all done by hand in books, uh, largely by volunteers going door to door, uh, keeping books of, of when a child is born and adding it to those records. And then to just to actually be able to organize the campaigns um, after you know, that amount of information, which took weeks and weeks and weeks, everything um, scheduled for this one day uh, when the, the vaccination workers would be dispersed you know, to all of these regions. It, it was just a huge amount of um, of organization and collaboration as well. Um, the children we met, I mean, it's, you know, it's the same of children all over the world, but they were just gorgeous. You know, so we just cute. fell in love a million times a day. Um, Olive played games with them. That yeah, they were playing red light, green light, and I was like, that was my game, are you joking? <laughs> um, and, uh, and the newborn babies, um, amazing. We, we got to go into a maternity ward, which um, I was talking about having Olive in Australia, which was basically like the labor ward was like a five-star hotel um, compared to the ward where these mothers were sharing beds. Um, that's the labor room, which kind of made me go a little, um, you know, tingly. And, and um, it was something about the bucket especially really um, got to me. Uh, and, um, and yet, you know, this universal thing about mothers, they, they love their babies, they want the best for them, and they were, they were going to extraordinary lengths to, to get their children vaccinated um, against you know, really difficult challenges and circumstances, not just the, the heat and the, the distance they would have to travel, um, but the, the workers were also overcoming these obstacles. There were communities who were um, in regions that uh, were on islands that you could only access at a certain low tide. Um, we just heard amazing stories yeah, like that. Yeah, vaccinations done on boats and stuff like that. Yeah, that, and, and that they were really trying to reach every child. Um, Olive fell particularly in love with, <laughs> with this baby who was uh, reluctant at first, as most kids are, and, and Olive won her over, which was, which was really sweet. Um, we, just, we, we just had 
such an amazing time. 40% um, of these children we saw were actually malnourished, which was just another kind of, you know, you can forget in that moment, you're just talking to kids and then you realize, oh, they may not have eaten today. Um, but it, it really was just a, a, a really inspiring um, glimpse of, of a mother's love, apart from anything else, this, this universal bond of, of mothers and children, um, wanting the best, wanting their child to have the safest, uh, healthiest chance of, of life. Um, measles works incredibly quickly, it's unbelievably contagious, and it's not just in, in India or Congo. Uh, there were five cases of measles in Brooklyn last uh, month in April. Um, a single case of measles costs the US government $140,000, uh, which again, something I didn't realize. Um, it's phenomenal, uh, and yet vaccination, safe, efficient, and it costs a dollar a child. I think I've lost the red light, but I think that, is that our time? Yes, it is our time. Thank you so much. Thank you.